Hello friends, very good evening. <coughs> Last month, I discussed about the value stream mapping, which was about how to detect the problems. Now after detection of problems, today's webinar is on the topic how to solve the problem that is the greatest challenge. We are going to discuss today a unique problem solving technique which was developed by Toyota Motor Corporation and found one of the most effective methodology to solve the process problems. That's known as A3 problem solving. So we are going to discuss and learn what is it. A3 problem solving technique. So, yeah. in this series of polython, so this is a, in continuation of continuous improvement technique, this is a, another webinar. So the outline of webinar is it's about A3 problem solving. That's the main topics covered in this. First starting point is what is the goal of organization? Clarity of goal is one of the most important things, starting point. Then what prevents achieving the goal? This is very important to know what are the constraints in path to journey to, towards goal. That can be identified by problem detection technique, which is called as value stream mapping, which we have discussed during last month in this series of webinars. After value stream mapping, we come to know the specific problems which are constrained for achieving the goal of the organization. So those constraints are the problem. So this describe what's the goal, what is the problem. Then we are going to discuss on A3 thinking and eight steps of A3 problems solving technique and one real case study which has been implemented in a small and medium industry. So the goal of every organization is very clear, the growth. It's not just only profit. Profit is one of the subsets of growth. Traditionally, all organizations, they focus on only profit and Ultimately, because of the profit focus, the problems are not solved from the root cause level. For the growth, we have to improve the four areas. First is the improving the process to deliver value desired by the customer then only we can make profit and all this value profit and process management can be done by the people once the competence and engagement of people is enhanced then only growth is possible so what prevents growth is the problems how to make growth happen 
two step journey it's called diagnostic journey and remedial journey what's diagnostic journey detection of problem for that the most effective tool is value stream mapping and the remedial journey involves problem solving and the most effective tool is a3 thinking or a3 problem solving technique which is topic of the today's webinar to make growth happen we have to increase the sales and profit both how to increase the sales by enhancing the global competitiveness of your products and services and how to improve the profitability by reducing the costs so these are the two basic things for the financial management of a company to increase the sales and profitability what makes our products less competitive and costlier so in earlier webinars we have explained that there are three components in the selling price of the product one is the value creation cost second is the cost of waste which are being generated unknowingly in the process and third component of price is the profit so basically our competitiveness is reduced because of the lot of waste generated in our process and this concept was brought by toyota production system or the lean manufacturing to improve the profitability improve the competitiveness we have to continuously eliminate the waste but waste is the symptom how to eliminate the waste just attacking the system we cannot eliminate waste unless we reach to the root cause of the problem again it may appear again and again so for elimination of root cause of problem we have to follow a methodology to reach the root cause and then only solving the problem will be practical so before going to problem solving technique let's see have a quick overview of how the waste is generated in our manufacturing processes an organization is a network of interdependent process as you see here the materials inputs coming from suppliers they pass through procured and processed through several process network process or departments of the company like a purchase design production maintenance quality assurance supporting service shipping all are involved all these processes are involved for taking order of customers processing the product and delivering to them so the organization is a network of interdependent process all the functional departments are interdependent and each department works as a process so the basic concept of process any process uses four m's materials machine manpower and methods after the interaction of these four m's there are four kinds of operations are performed in any process retention transportation processing and inspection especially in the manufacturing process we get the raw materials and retain them in our stores as an inventory then as and when required it is transported to the concerned process where processing is done in several steps the processing involves transformation of inputs into desired output once the product is made in the various manufacturing processes then it is inspected whether it is meeting the requirements of 
customer or not once it is qualifying the customer requirements then quality assurance departments they release for the shipping and then it is a delivered to the customer so these are the four main operations in any process whether it is a small industry or large industry or medium industry making steel food products engineering items automobiles or jumbo jets all are following this retention transportation processing and inspection inspection operations in their manufacturing process during these operations two types of activities are done by the people and the processes these are the these activities is the value adding which improves it changes the form finish and the usability of product and another is the waste which doesn't add any value to the product in the process so these are the value adding and non value adding activities are performed in the process and after that two things generate one is the product which has value which has got a useful components which is desired by the customer and there is eight types of waste are generated which is undesirable and they reduce the value of the product they increase the cost they cause delay and these are the main concern of organizations the more the waste lesser the value of your product more the delays and less meeting the requirements of customer so to improve the competitiveness of product and profitability of the organization so the these eight types of waste generated in any process need to be eliminated from its root so these waste we have discussed during lean manufacturing webinar and several other sessions so again i am just giving an overview the first one is the over production waste which is means producing without customer order so that over production is one of the major cause of increase of cost that is builds up inventory which is a <coughs> which is blocking a lot of working capital and space so the first is overproduction second is inventory third is the defects already we know because of the deficiency in the operations we generate lot of defects those defects either has to be worked out reworked or has to be scrapped scrap so this way they increase the cost then another waste fourth waste is the waiting sometimes material and machine is ready but the operator is missing or the operator and machine is ready but the material is not there or the information is not there or <coughs> information is there material is there but the machine is under breakdown so these are the various combinations of waiting waste and fifth is over processing because of the traditional methods what we do we follow the all the steps without seeing that whether all the steps are essential or not once we do process analysis we may find several steps in any process can be improved or can be eliminated or combined with two or three process so it needs analysis of our processing steps to reduce the over processing the sixth is waste is a motion waste because of the bad design of machines or the layout so it causes ergonomic problems to the operator they have to bend stretch strain so which are causing the fatigue under the fatigue condition no operator can produce quality 
Seventh is a transportation waste, lot of material handling within the plant, which can be avoided by better handling practice and better layout of the machines. And the eighth one is unused potential of the people. Because people, those who are touching the process involved in the manufacturing, they have got a tremendous experience and knowledge of about the machines. But in most of the companies, especially in the smaller companies, the semis, they are not being involved in the continuous improvement activity. They just come and produce just like a robo and not involving use of their experience and knowledge to make improvement in the process and products. So these are the eight kinds of waste which are impacting adversely on the global competitiveness and resulting to higher costs. So these waste must be addressed by every company to increase profitability and competitiveness of its products. So how to reduce cost and improve competitiveness? The lean approach says that only three steps. First, detection of waste. Second is the elimination of waste and third is the prevention of waste. So various types of tools are required for these three steps. Detection of waste is the value stream mapping, elimination of waste, what we are going to discuss today, A3 problem solving technique and prevention of waste is about the cultural transformation of company so that the waste after an improvement does not reappear in the processes. So how to detect problems? These are waste or the just symptoms. The main reason of the waste is some hidden problem in the four M's, in the materials, methods, machines, and the people. So how to detect problems is becomes the very first challenge. So the wireless stream mapping is the most effective technique which we covered during last webinar. What's wireless stream mapping? To identify the problem, we had to follow a product's production path right from beginning to end and draw a visual representation of every process in the material and information flows. Then draw future state map of how value should flow after elimination of the waste. So value stream is a horizontal alignment of all processes instead of current vertical division of various processes like marketing, purchase, production, inspection, shipping, all are vertically aligned in traditional management system. Now, in the wireless stream, they are aligned in a single path. And the purpose of wireless stream mapping to dig out the hidden waste, the, to dig out the causes of hidden waste, which is the problem. So the problem is the main reason that generates waste. To Eliminate the waste generation, we have to first detect problems and then solve it. Most common problems faced by any manufacturing organization are high defect rate. This is the quality problem that increases cost and customer dis dissatisfaction. The low productivity because of the defect in the products or the some process constraints. Then delayed deliveries because of this defects and waste. Delivery to the customer are delayed and this is one of the very, very important concern of today's customer. Then higher inventory is another kind of waste. It requires a lot of working capital and we have to incur about 20 to 30 percent of inventory carrying cost 
on the working capital. Then the frequent breakdowns of machine and overall high costs. These are the very, very common problems of all manufacturing organizations, maybe small, medium, or large. So let's see what is a problem? How do we see a problem? A problem is the gap between the way things are now and the way they are supposed to be or you want them to be in the future. A manager has a problem when the work assigned fails to produce the expected results. This is the explanation given by training within industries, one of the most effective training methodology adopted by American defense industries during Second World War and which finally learned and improved by Toyota, which has become the best company after using the problem solving technique. So what's the problem is a gap between the current state and desired state. The, the quantum of gap that decides the severity. If you see problem in the work is a deviation, any deviation or abnormality from the standard way of doing work. If you see A, B, C, D, fourth blocks are there. Four standard methods are there, standards are there. But in the C step, the standard has not been followed just like A, B and D and that deviation in the application of a standard or use of a standard that causes a problem. So the, the clear definition of problem as we see that a problem is gap between the desired state and the current state. And it is happening because of deviation from the standard method of working. So this is the cause of problem. So how to get rid of the problem by following validated and effective problem solving techniques. There are two paradigms of problem solving. One is that the blanket solution is provided by the manager or somebody external person based on their past experiences. Another method is problem solving through rapid small experiments. Most of the companies in the world they are following the blanket solution based on the past experience. But the lean approach and the innovative approach says don't follow blindly the blanket solutions. Because when the solution was developed in the past, situations were different. It may not be exactly same. Symptom may be same, but the situations those are causing the waste or the problem, result of the problem may not be same. So the blanket solution thinking is no more relevant. One has to use new experimental scientific method to solve the problem. So these two methods are the blanket solution thinking is result oriented problem solving because we try to fix the effect not the cause of effect, it is a symptomatic treatment. And most of the companies, they are following the same symptomatic treatment. That's why the problem reappears again and again. Why they are doing traditionally that result oriented problem solving technique, people followed and trying to follow the same tradition. And they are not aware with proper effective problem solving technique. So in the result oriented problem focus is on the final result, not on the problem solving process. It is a fragmented thinking because we just think about the result at the end of a process and take fragmented action, lack of organization wide strategy and because of the silo approach of management, vertical departments are there, every department is seeing problem individually and they try to solve it. It is on 
basis of command and control whoever the senior or the boss whatever instruction they say based on their past experiences this is the solution we have used so the their subordinates and front line managers they have to follow it and <clears throat> based on the experience of the senior management they try to fix the problem it is a defensive because most of the employees they feel that failure is not allowed in the organization failure is taken very negatively but it should be seen as a positive aspect means why did we fail that is important to know employees feel the need to justify their actions most of the companies they take failure very negatively and rate poor on the part of employee so the people are afraid of failures so they try to fix problems on the short term basis someone else caused the problem means always we try to blame somebody else for the problem and by rationalization of data we try to justify it's not my mistake it's somebody else that is causing the problem so the blanket solutions use of continuous specialist to solve the organizational problem not building capability of others means some external consultant or some person who is not directly involved in the process he comes and suggests this is the solution and that is being followed by the people but what is more important the people who are operating who are touching the processes 24 by 7 they should be involved in the solving the problems so this misses opportunities for learning so in the result oriented problem solving so externally you fix it based on symptomatic treatment what ideal methodology for problem solving should be followed the process oriented problem solving what is a process oriented problem solving it focuses on the means in the basically causal factors rather than the results where the problem root cause of the problem is hidden talks about system thinking horizontal it talks about the horizontal value stream not just only the vertical silos functional department it includes the system thinking includes processes and people which are aligned to achieve organizational goals leaders instead of command and control leaders are considered as a teacher coach guide so the toyota approach is that don't try to analyze the problem solve in the board room just based on some senior people's thinking and imagination instead of that go and see at the workplace where the problem has been generated mentor the people to develop problem solvers this is the job of every manager every senior management go at the site of problem that which is called as a gimba where the value is being created be a part of problem solver along with the people who are operating so mentor the people on the technique of problem solving internalize create an environment where it's okay to fail the failing is not a negative thing only through experimentation and failure only we can learn so if failure takes place with a good intent it should be encourage in fact but the problem people should learn lesson from every failure so that it is not repeated this is internalization then <clears throat> let's identify the problem and solve it together means not just as an expert but as a learner so whether you are a senior manager or the top management you have to solve the problem along with all team members as a lagna so jointly working as a team to solve the problem based on the process oriented approach so the future we have to think about how the process oriented problem solving works the a3 thinking is based on the process oriented problem solving technique so <clears throat> the greatest scientist of the century 
Einstein, Albert Einstein, what he says that you cannot solve a problem from the same consciousness that created it. You must learn to see the world in you. So this is very, very important for every kind of organization, whether it is small or the large or medium industry. Most of the people, they think just because of the long experience of the work, they can solve the problem easily. That's totally a wrong paradigm. For solving the problems, we have to think differently. That may come either by learning the new technique or some external person who comes and see the problems in a different way, then the solution will come. If the same people are trying to solve the problem, they'll use the blanket problem solving approach, result oriented, which may work in short time, but short term, but it cannot eliminate the root cause and the problem will reappear. And this is happening in majority of industries. So how to go for a process oriented problem solving is the A3 thinking. We have to think in a different way. What is A3 thinking is a philosophical approach to problem solving that centers on a well communicated team approach to using the PDCA cycle. PDCA was approach was developed by Sheward, which was popularized by Deming. So this is basically based on the laws of nature. Is to solve any problem, we need four phases, plan, do, check, and act. So this is a standard methodology that should be followed. The tool used in applying this way of thinking is known as the A3 report. As you see here, uh, Toyota developed a form, Miss a methodology to solve the problem, which is planned and presented in just a three sheet of paper in the manner it is shown. <coughs> Structured manner, first any problem in the A3 thinking, first we have to understand, grasp the situation and write a background of the problem. Then comes assessment of the current condition of the problem, why it is happening, that helps to identify. The third st step of A3 thinking is the setting a goal or target. So what is the current performance level and what target we want to achieve? And fourth is collection and analysis of process data. Then only we can reach to the root cause and the Fourth phase of it, propose means developing a countermeasure. What is the most appropriate solution for those problems developing by the team? And then making a plan for implementation of the countermeasure. And finally, implementing the countermeasure. And seventh phase is that follow up, making sure that oh, all the plan is being effectively implemented and we are getting the proper results. So in the elements of A3 thinking, there are seven main elements. These are the logical thinking process, objectivity, results. It monitors both results and process, not just only results. It is based on the synthesis, distillation, and visualization of the problem and its solution, and then alignment of the whole process towards the goal and the coherence within a consistency across the teams, across the processes, and it is a system, present systems viewpoint. So these are the seven basic, basic elements of A3 thinking which are involved in this problem solving technique. So it is based on the It is based on the PDCA management, that is a scientific methodology of problem solving. Before starting anything, firmly grasp the current situation. It's a, no need of jumping without grasping the situation. First, one has to go to the place of problem, observe it, 
try to learn it and understand it, then only develop a hypothesis why the problem is occurring. So based on the knowledge, experience and observation, the person, the problem solver has to develop a hypothesis which must be experimented. Hypothesis cannot be taken as a solution. This is just a imagination based on the facts and experiences. A roadmap is developed which need to be validated by implementation. So based on the hypothesis, a plan has to be developed which has to be implemented and again measure the results and check the, whether the, we are getting a proper desired effect or, or positive effect on the results. If it is coming, then my hypothesis was correct. If it is not getting the desired result, then it means again we have to develop a different hypothesis. So this is a plan, do, check and finally once the results are stable or any deviations in the check phase, it has to be readjusted until we get the planned results and the stability of the process. So this plan, do, check, act is the four step process for solving the problem. So A3 thinking <coughs> for making the plan or proposal for any problem solving technique or after the completion of problem solving, a report is made on A3 size standard seed, giving this in this specific layout. So a standard methodology is adopted throughout the organization, but people must be very clear about the concept of A3 thinking and the preparation of report methodology. The title starts with what is the problem we are addressing. Then the background of the process where problem is taking place, then giving the current state data, then setting the goals, actually what target we want to achieve, and then analyzing the goals, and finally future state, what exactly we want to get in the future after implementation of the countermeasure and then making implementation plan, how we are going to implement the solutions in different steps. And finally, after solution is implemented, results are attained, then the continuous follow-up to know the effect and the stability of the process. So this is a A3 thinking is expressed in a A3 sheet. So there are eight steps of A3 problem solving technique. What are these steps? So what's A3 problem solving is a pragmatic and focused on problem description, thus facilitating installation of simple economic and effective solution. A3 thing, problem solving technique includes concepts of Toyota production system, which are relevant when it comes to seeing problems. It allows to describe problems in such a way and with such a precision that it becomes easy to find countermeasures. A3 problem solving technique practiced daily by all people at every level. It allows appearance of team spirit thus developing a powerful company. So it brings the whole team together to see the problem on the A with A3 thinking develop plan for solving the problem on the A3 report format and work on it. It makes people grow. It's not just solving the problem, it sharpens their knowledge, skill to solve the problems. It is the elementary brick of the Toyota production system. Today, Toyota is recognized as the best automobile company in the world. So every company is trying to learn from Toyota production system. They call it, this is a brick by brick made by the people by adopting A3 problem solving technique. So how it is done? It is a 
Day three, the problems of any organization are solved project by project. During the value stream mapping, what about the problems we identified that becomes a project for problem solving, which can be solved by A3 problem solving technique. So the, every project is the improvements are made project by project. Every project is a problem solving project. It is done by a multidisciplinary project teams. Objective of every project is to solve the problem from the root cause level. Every project should have a starting and completion date. So all the problem solving projects should be limited to number of days depending on the complexity of problem. Some can be done just a few days, some may take two to three months, but there should be clear understanding to the pro team that what is the start date and when that project should be closed after solving the problem and stabilizing the process. So <clears throat> these steps, eight steps, what they are this, first, what is the problem? These are spread over plan, do, check, act. Then what are all the parts to the problem? Then third step is what is our goal? Fourth step I discuss why did this, this problem happen? means analyzing the root cause and the fifth is what we'll do about it how to what countermeasures or what actions we intend to take to solve the problem and develop a plan the fifth step then sixth step do it implement the plan after thoughtful thinking in uh, in the five steps and seventh step again check it whether the plan implement after implementation could solve the problem, could reduce the or eliminate the root cause which was generating waste. If it has worked, it means your countermeasures or the solutions were correct, that you have rightly followed the process. If it has not worked, again we have to go back to the step one and repeat the problem solving technique. Once after the seventh step, it has worked and processes are stable. Then we have to standardize the process so that that knowledge and that it's a solution must be part of standard work. So if you just see the many companies might be implementing Six Sigma methodology of the Mac. So practically all are following whether it is a DMAC, Six Sigma, or the A3 thinking, or some other problem solving technique, all are following PDCA in this way. The plan in the Six Sigma methodology involves define, measure, and analyze phases. In A3 thinking, it involves the five steps. Clarify the problem. Second step is break down the problem. Third is set the targets. Fourth is analyze the root cause. And fifth is develop countermeasures. So this is the time taking intellectual journey and a collection of data analysis of the root cause and develop a plan. So here your knowledge, skill of problem solving technique as well as operation of the process is essential. So both operation people and problem solving team together they have to work and on these five steps. Once countermeasures are developed, a plan is to be made. That plan comes to the next phase, improve phase, the do phase. Here, whatever the plan has been made, it must be ensured by the team. The countermeasures are implemented as per the plan. And after the implementation, in the check phase, evaluate results and process. In most of the problem solving technique, people just only look for the results they try to find out if results are coming they become happy okay my problem is solved no it's not solved it may be might have been solved for the short term unless the change in the process is made to eliminate the root cause problem cannot be solved so that's why in the a3 thinking a3 problem solving technique both result and process both has to be monitored means with the right 
method has been used to get the results many situations you may get result but the process is not the correct so it it has not solved the seventh step unless the right process is delivering the right result so the result and process both has to be checked and under monitoring of the problem solving team once the results are favorable process has become stable then we have to standardize a standardization method means we have to make a new standard operating procedure we have to retrain our people to hold the gains of improvement by following the revised method of operations so let's discuss each step of a3 problem solving technique one by one first step is clarify the problem most of the people they just jump to solution after knowing the symptom based on the past experiences in one of the very famous psychological process known as neuro linguistic programming it says that past is not equal to present and it cannot be equal to the future so that mostly people try to just fix the problems based on the past experiences it may not be relevant because the situation is changing every moment so first paradigm we have to change past is not equal to present present is not equal to future so every time we have to think problem as a fresh what has worked 5 years back for the same kind of symptoms it may not work today so uh, we have to explore in a different way to think in a three way then only we can find the solution so what is a problem is a very simple thing the gap between current situation and desired situation or the ideal situation or goal so the gap is the concern the bigger the gap more severe the problem so first for clarification of the problem we must have a clarity in objective terms not just in subjectivity current situation should be clearly well defined measurable visual so that people can understand it so we have to learn the various objective tools visual management tools to define our current situation and then based on that once current situation is known in a objective measurable and visual way then we should visualize about what target situation or the ideal or the future situation we want to achieve again the the future situation future target should be also clear well defined measurable connected to the ultimate goal of the organization it becomes part of a bigger system and it should be visual it should not be taken just to address the specific process but its impact on the overall vision of the company overall strategy of the company how it is impacting so in a bigger picture the target situation should be taken so <laughs> once the gap is clearly well defined measurable and visible then it is possible to take action on it to solve it if it is not clearly defined it is not clear to the people it is not well defined if it is not measurable if it is not divisible you cannot take a proper action you may put lot of effort but you will not get the result so the clarity in terms of understanding in terms of visibility in terms of measurability is very important to clarify the problem the second step is once the problem is known clearly defined by to the people then what we should do then we have to break down the problem into small pieces 
segments. There was a book long back, How to Eat an Elephant. One cannot eat an elephant as one piece, but definitely by making a segment piece by piece, by breaking down into slices, one can definitely eat it. So here the problem has to be solved by breaking down to several segments, then only it is possible. So the second step is segmenting the problem. See here, the, what is the problem? The gap, the gap between current and ideal situation, which has been clearly very defined, objectively measurable and visual. So the first step that has been done. Now the same problem means it has to be broken down into several segments that you see, various steps. All cl clear, well-defined, measurable, visual study and confirm with Genshi Gembutsu. Go and see. How it is possible? You cannot just break down the problem by your imagination sitting in your office. You have to go at the site where the problem has occurred, where the problem exists and see the entire process and break down into various steps because problem is cumulative effect of various steps. Once it is broken down into various segments, then it becomes easy to attack each segment separately. So <clears throat> second step of breaking down the problem requires the study, the process to detail. So you have to problem solving team must go to the site where the problem is occurring dedicate sufficient time for the breakdown first you observe it don't jump to conclusion based on your experiences again you might be watching for next last 15 20 years it doesn't matter you go and have a different look different observation mind to see the problem dedicate sufficient time for understanding the problem and breaking down to various small segments. Then study the steps of the process. Then study each step of the process because the problem, the root cause of problem is hidden in some of the process which can be made visible only after studying every step of the process. Then interact with the people, those who are touching the process, who are, those who are operating, try to find out the reasons from them it may not be the true reason, but that can give a lot of inputs for reaching to the root cause. Collect data, collect documents, which is having the record of past operations, understand the tools, how to solve it. Means you have to learn the various lean tools or problem solving tools. And of course, you must have a thorough knowledge of the process. After the combination of the process knowledge and the lean tools will help you to solve the problem in an effective way. So all problems can be divided into smaller defined problems by region, by location, by department, by product, by channel, by customers, etc. So this way the problem can be broken down to several pieces which can be analyzed easily and the root cause can be correct root cause can be detected. Specify the point of cause. So actually the point of cause is in some of the steps. We have to reach to the point of cause where the problem is present in a specific part of the process so that can be made possible by breaking down. Let's take this example. From a car company, ultimate car coming out was having some scratches on its body. So all the quality inspector were buried, means it was passing through seven, eight steps. So what they just find out the point of cause, they 
broken down the steps in, like assembly line and different steps and tried to trace back and reverse way first the finished car with a scratch the team went to the previous process they found that a scratch is present then again it means the cause is not hidden in the just previous process then again they went back and they found again scratches are existing again went back to the previous process the scratch was there and trace back trace back finally found that there is a, a process where no scratch was there it means that between the no scratch and the process where a scratch is formed the problem is lying there so that process where the scratch is formed could be detected at a point of cause so in this way they can further investigate why the scratches are being built up so unless the problem is broken down in various steps it becomes really difficult for difficult to find out the what is the real root of cause so after the breaking down and detecting the cause third step is set the target what exactly you want to achieve the target setting as we have seen the first step the clarity of problem is required by current state and the future state vision so here how to set the target again the target should be very clear very well defined it should be measurable and visible just like we try to define the problem clear well defined and measurable visual target is essential to tackle the problem what is the problem solving from changing from one state of operation one way of working to another state that is a problem solving so clear well defined measurable the change means action plan should be also clear well defined measurable visual so the all the people who are working in the process they can understand the same way the prob the things are happening otherwise if it is not well defined it is not clear to the people it's not measurable it's not visible then everybody takes action based on their own perception which may not solve the problem how to set the target very famous technique known most of you must be knowing smart technique smart means it has to be specific measurable actionable result oriented and time bound so this is a smart technique what it uh, describes what need to be changed and how much change first target should be clear then what need to be changed how much it has to be changed and by when timeline is very important every problem solving technique must have a defined timeline it cannot be just open ended so output deliverable to be achieved means clarity of what exactly you want what changes you want to do how much you want to change and by when you want to finish it so not things to do means all these things clearly set in targets are the tool to stimulate improvement means unless the clarity of target is there it is not possible for people to take proper action so smart targets includes a specific state exactly what you want to accomplish who is going to do it what he is he or she is going to do where and why the region must be clearly defined understood by the people measurable means how will you demonstrate and evaluate the extent to which the goal has been met how you are going to measure that means you are getting a desired effect or desired result the milestones and the measurable outcomes 
then achievable stretch and challenging goals with an ability to achieve outcome. What is the action oriented work? So basically here it should be made which can be achieved by people. Don't make it too stringent targets which cannot be achieved. So it's a practical approach but it should be challenging. Then the relevant means how does the goal tie into your key responsibilities? How is it aligned to the objectives? There has to be goal should be aligned with the company objective, process objective and means practicality has to be there. Then it must be time bound. Set one or more target dates. The by when to guide your goal to successfully and timely completion. This is very important. All goals must be time bound. So smart targets has to be set. So one has to learn how to set the targets. So this particular webinar, I'll say it is a giving an overview of the A3 thinking process and various tools. Frankly speaking, the two hours is just the introduction and giving comprehensive understanding of the technique you must learn. Otherwise, it requires a lot of learning. A structured program, training program requires minimum two days to understand the basic concepts and do some exercises to internalize it. And a lot of time, maybe up to three months to apply it on a specific project, then only one can learn. So we have completed the first three steps. What are the first step? First step was clarify the problem. Second was again coming to revising about the first is the clarify the problem. It should be clear, well defined, measurable, connected to the strategy, vision of the company and it must be part of bigger system and visual. Don't just see only at department level, see as a system horizontal thinking to understand the problem, how it is going to impact to the company. Second, once problem is clearly understood, well defined, then break down the problem into several segments so that one can reach to the real root cause. And then third step is means target setting. Again, just like a problem clarification, the target should be very clear in the smart terms, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. So after these three steps, now comes the most challenging task, determine the root cause. So what's happening in most of the situations, just based on their perception, without knowing the reality of the situation, based on their hunches or the past experience, people just immediately jump to the root cause without any proper analysis. This is the normal practice followed by all levels of manager, whether it is senior management or junior management, everybody just jump to solution without knowing the root cause, without analysis of the root cause. So what's the root cause analysis? As you are seeing, this particular tree, typical to radish, what we use in the vegetables, the <clears throat> we just see, if you just judge by the leaves, just by symptom. <clears throat> so, and take an appropriate action, it's not going to solve the real problem. So, most of the solutions in the current practice, unless the people are trained on the right problem solving technique, they mostly they are attacking only on the symptomatic treatment. Here it says, first collection of a data and analysis of data. Data related to the causes and data related to the effect. This develop relationship between cause and effect and try to identify which kind of data that can help you to reach to the true root cause. So relationship has to be developed, then collection of a data has to be done and then analysis by analysis we can reach to the root cause where is the problem so <clears throat> then only solution should be thought of so the first step becomes collection of a relevant data if you have gone through statistical method or six sigma the 
y is function of x, where is the y is the result effect and x is various causal factors, variables in the process. So the y and function x relationship has to be developed and the data related to the effect as well as the variable process variables has to be collected and using the cause and effect analysis tool one has to pinpoint ultimately these to the two root cause. So for a data collection what you have to do collect data on the relationship between defects and various factors that influence it the causal factor or which are in the form of process variables. Select the appropriate sample size to get the true, true cause we cannot depend just on only one or few samples. The bigger the si sample size more chances of accuracy. Here the sampling technique, standard sampling techniques are used. How many samples are to be taken? There are some standards are there. Those standards need to be used. Collect data impartially. This data has to be collected without any bias in the mind, without any prejudice, only just fresh data without any impartiality, without any bias has to be collected from the sources. Do not collect only data that is easy and convenient to collect. Here the relevant data has to be there. Some data may be difficult to collect. So one has to find out how we can collect those data. It should not be just dependent on easily available data. Design appropriate formats data sheet for data collection. So a proper format, proper tabulated way and the steps that can help the people involved in data collection to get the data timely and the correctly. Then after collection of all data, compile data in appropriate format that can facilitate correct and quick analysis. In fact, in Six Sigma, there is called measurement system analysis. That's one of the very important step, whether your method of collection of data is correct or not. That should be analyzed one has to ensure that my data collection method is correct, reliable. So first measurement system analysis is important. If you just with hard work and a lot of spending time, you collected the data, but your process of data collection was wrong. So it is going to, instead of solving the problem, it is going to make the problem more complex because of the, on the wrong data, you are taking a decision. So it may, create another complexity in the problem. So this is a very, very important and quality activity, means reliability of data collection method and re selection of relevant data is most important for reaching to the true root cause. So I'm sure most of you must be conversant with cause and defect analysis where the six major factors in typical manufacturing sector is evolved. Any problem may be because of the some hidden causes either in equipment or process or the people competence or method of working or maybe the material deficiency or environmental factors or the management policies. This typically it is given it can be six or the four depending on the situation. So these are the problems are occurring in most of the manufacturing because of some problem in one of one or more than one of these six basic elements, factors. So one has to collect all relevant data, establish relationship between the effect and cause and collect relevant data. So the data collection and analysis is the longest time taking activity because data collection data has to fresh it should not be just on the historical data it should be properly taken by the fresh team in adequate numbers as per the sampling procedures then analysis has to be done to diagnose the the real root cause <coughs> once root cause is known then one has to find out solutions. Means here, especially the solution word is not used because you can't solve the problem. You can take appropriate countermeasure. 
only solve problem cannot be eliminated forever so that's why the typical word counter measures means which can prevent the effect of any such situation so developing counter measures first you have to consider how to eliminate the root cause don't just go on the symptomatic treatment like inspection if defects are generating more in your process instead of one inspector you apply you just deploy two inspectors so they go on screening the products before dispatch and select separating the defective from the good quality product so only after the intensive inspection the good quality product is packed and sent to the customer so the customer is happy he is getting good quality product but because of the high rate of defectives you have lost a lot of money your process is in capital so the solution is not just only putting in more number of inspector <coughs> more important to know why this defects are occurring what is the root cause of it unless that is eliminated it is not a problem solving so use creative techniques creativity techniques to generate large number of ideas here the innovation thinking out of box thinking these are important and problem solving should not be done by just single person because of his authority or position he is a boss but problem solving has to be done by a multidisciplinary team people like a process problem cannot be just solved by the people who are operating the process but the people who are maintaining the equipment who are supplying the raw material the marketing people all maintenance people all must be involved in identifying the problem so how it is done the famous tool is brainstorming all participants present their ideas and the idea collector records them in the brainstorming all the people see the problem from a different perspective and all share one of the very very important aspect of when is coming that no idea should be considered as stupid or the irrelevant so the thinking any idea is stupid is stupidity in the brainstorming we have to take every kind of idea some may idea you may feel that it is a crazy idea but it's not the brain is summing we have to consider we have to encourage the people to come out with more and more ideas by thinking and internal discussion by applying their knowledge skill past experiences creative approach so the focus on quantity here the quality cannot be just of the ideas more number more the number of ideas because if you see all the inventions like whether it is a software development or aeroplane and so many things were not these inventions were not done by the specialists in the field they are having just a common people but they had a different kind of ideas so the focus on quantity more than more ideas come by the team it is a better so unusual ideas are welcome means most of the inventions out of box thinking comes only for uncommon ideas which very few people come can come out so this is the brainstorming is proper technique again you need to proper training in the how to conduct the brainstorming and another technique developed by brainstorming people sit together they discuss but another technique means improved version of idea generation was developed by japanese they call it brain writing here people don't discuss instead of that a sheet of paper idea generated by one person is written on that that same idea circulates in in cycle specific sequence to all the people what instead of discussing it or generating that idea people the next person he thinks on the written idea and try to improve it after his improvement 
then again the same sheet is passed to the next person based on that improved idea again he or she tries to improve the third stage in this way the same idea is circulated among the people they repeat the process at least five times so that means they go on building up on the developed idea instead of thinking differently but building up the right idea so this is another technique of brain writing to generate solutions start without any evaluation of the idea means whatever idea has been generated during brainstorming brain writing don't evaluate them so first you collect the idea then you think for a possible solution after generating lot of ideas now you have to create a possible solution after ascertaining the causes remedial action begins with development of possible solutions to the problem this step involves highest level of creative thinking by team members basic preparation for generating generating possible solution involves re-examine the improvement targets now again go back what targets you have fixed after getting a lot of ideas whether that target has been fixed as underrated or overrated stimulate the untapped potential for creating new ideas fostering individuals creativity again stimulate the people encourage the people to find out some more new ideas which has not come across means suddenly means if you just again think a new idea may generate because we have to find out something unique which can solve the problem in most effective manner so be fair unbiased and flexible in your thinking one should not have any selfish interest in the idea generation right it should be unbiased neutral way then only you can generate the pure and good idea develop an idea proposal for achieving the target means not just giving the idea once idea has come for improvement you must develop a proposal how the idea is to be implemented practically even many situations you have to demonstrate it otherwise lot of people will come with brilliant ideas but they don't know how to apply it how to put in practice so it has got no meaning so here that's why it says develop an idea proposal once you have got the idea you have to visualize you have to give a proposal in a3 format this is the way how idea has to be implemented and what results will come expected to come so then think of series of steps that will bring you closer to the goal so just giving the idea has no use mostly happening lot of people they give brilliant ideas but they don't know how to put in practice what will be the expected outcome so this needs lot of creativity visualization and learning the visual thinking tools to generate proper idea and develop methodology for implementing idea so develop various alternative solutions using brainstorming techniques there should not be just only one solution for any problem it's better always to develop several solutions alternatives by collectively so that one can select it select the most appropriate solution here not the best solution here especially i am mentioning means it's not necessary best solution but it is the most relevant and appropriate solution just like example some solutions may be very brilliant but they require a lot of capital maybe after applying that you can solve the problem in better way but viability may not be there so based on that means that's why various alternative solution has to be there we have to find out which is the appropriate which is viable which is economic which is effective which can be easily implemented all these factors must be considered in selecting the appropriate solution then remove or neutralize the cause the purpose of solution or the counter measure is to eliminate or neutralize the effect of the cause so optimize the cost 
in the business scenario we have to see that any solution implemented it should not add cost it has to optimize the cost so that product remains quant competitive and profitable be acceptable to those who have final word basically the problem solving team is from different departments so whatever the solution is there so ultimately it's very important that it must be acceptable to the process owner in which process this is going to be applied it's better the process owner should be also one of the one of the members of the problem solving team but it must be acceptable to the process owner where the idea has to be implemented then only it is appropriate solution the proposed remedy must clear three hurdles the project team accepts first because every project has every project team has about five to seven members or even more may be there so first the solution has to be accepted by the project whole team means it must be everybody's acceptance is important by consensus it should <coughs> selected proposal is tested on a small, a small scale before finally implementing the proposal first experiment has to be made on a small scale small test then only once the results are favorable then solution can be implemented at real place so proposal is tested at full it means once tested at small scale if it has given the good result then only proposal is the counter measure or solution has to be implemented at the real problem situation so this is the method for selecting the and implementing the proper solution now once solution is confirmed after small testing then what we need to do develop an action plan action what is a plan plan is a means sequence of it is a, a directive for the change so far the problem has been solved on paper only by intellectual activity of the team members now it is time to put into action after testing after finalization of the solution now important to put an action plan to decide what action who should take how long will it take when to start and finish an action plan has to be developed divide the solution into sequential tasks and develop an action plan so it starts with what are the for implementing the solution we have to develop sequential steps on the task or activity which must be performed who should be responsible for the implementation of the solution how long it will take what is the estimated time table when to start and when to finish means that's very important as mentioned every project should have a starting and beginning it should be clear and this way the plan is made and whole clarity is described in the action plan then it is handed over to the person for handed over to the project team and the process owner to implement it see the counter measures through many situations people start planning in very nice way but after starting the implementation after sometimes they just leave it so here the sixth step is very important that one must ensure that whatever the plan has been made it is definitely implemented here the time discipline and the implementation this execution dif- discipline is the key unless it is implemented properly whatever the best solution may be there it has got no meaning putting plan into action is the most crucial step most of the companies they fail on execution of the plan they can make very nice plan but the execution execution part is really very weak how to make it as you see it is like breaking the wall because people resist for the change means execution of any counter measure or solution is a, a change in the working which becomes unpleasant for the people or the situation so here to make sure that 
counter measure is implemented the speedy action together as a team never give up and act persistently here the self discipline commitment dedication is a very important so forcefully by persuading everybody means people in confidence then it is it has to ensure that the solution has been implemented as per the plan then only we can get the time bound results and the speedy action together as a team so here the speed of your action implementation is a very very important unless it is done in the forceful and speedy manner then the other uh, it becomes difficult to implement it never give up and act persistently there may be lot of resistance for the people who are operating it or who are impacted by it but here the persistency is very important to ensure that solutions are timely and with a forceful enthusiasm and in a proper defined manner is taken to ensure that see the counter measures through share information with others by informing reporting and consulting here basically all the people who are involved in the implementation they must be taken in confidence and all the information should be shared in transparent manner they must be explained why it is important to implement this methodology what how it is going to be implemented what results are going to come and what are the ultimate benefits to the organization and the process to the company so people must be convinced and all related information must be shared review the progress of the action plan and the results in regular review meeting here the role of top management becomes very crucial is unless they review the progress of action plan the implementation activity the people don't take interest so the to make sure that counter measures are through the top management must ensure that regular periodical monitoring and review is done when any problems are implementation coming they they provide all support and facilities infrastructure to ensure that plan is implemented properly ensure that your counter measures do not create adverse effect to other up stream or down stream so once we see in the value stream context horizontally so then we can avoid any impact adverse impact on the next process otherwise what happens just to rectify my departmental process i take a solution my problem is solved but the next process where i am after processing the material i am sending they have developed a problem so here this is important that we have to see we have to have a holistic view of the entire process system thinking which is one of the key parameters of healthy thinking so in that way we have to see that the problem is solved <clears throat> at the root cause level otherwise in the local process it can be solved but it can be another new problem for the next process this has to be avoided now the seventh step is that once we have implemented the solutions counter measures we have to monitor both in the traditional method only results are seen but here we have to see the results as well as the operations of the processes whether both are being correctly followed first means we have to see the new idea new plan which involves in changes in the actions causal factor whether that has been followed properly and if properly it has been followed whether it has given the right result or not so the result and process both need to be monitored not just one as you see in this cycle pdca has to be repeated at every stage a good process like a good garden will yield good results on an endless basis means like a garden if you just take care of the all the elements water roots of the plants soil 
all these actions if you are taking then only good results will come it cannot be just result may not come just by wiping the leaves of a flower because you have to continuously improve the root cause means soil condition the environmental condition giving the watering using the proper seed to make a good result in your farm then the here confirm results and process evaluate if target was achieved or not how to that what was the target was given whether we are achieving the target as per the plan evaluate the process and ensure that it is sustainable is now you have to after the along with the result you have see that changes made in the process are being followed and sustainable and they are giving the result as desired then confirm negative and positive effects just try to find out what are the negative effects of the implementation uh, what are the positive effect so the negates this all the information should be shared with the people involved the process owners and all the team that they, they must be involved and if any negative effect is coming then again people have to collectively find out why it is coming out and appropriate action has to be taken to neutralize the negative effect so this is a confirmation of the result and process to all concerned and monitoring is essential the eighth process now after seventh process step now you have seen that after making the changes you have started getting the stable stability in the process operation and desired results so once you become sure that people have acquired the competence required the knowledge of changes then you have to standardize the successful process process successful so you have to develop a standard this is very important activity just to hold the gain it should not be just left out of the success so that knowledge must be captured your standard practice instructions standards must be revised as per the new process and people are trained because the standardization is one of the key element to hold the gain and in future get the sustainable results so after successful execution then you have to make a standard in form of checklist in form of flow charts standard work chart operation manual is standard practice instruction so this are uh, this is a very important step to manage the knowledge gained from improvements and these documents becomes revised latest version of standards they must substitute the old version like a document control we apply in the iso 9000 quality management system so the documentation and document control is important and these documents not just only for making and putting in the files these documents new documents revised documents they become the most essential elements for the training all the operators people in ward they should be retrained on the new checklist new flow chart new standard working method new methodology of working so this is important the change has to be brought not only in the process and the machines but in main mind of the competence of the people who are going to use this new methodology so unless it is programmed in their mind through proper training and practice the problem is not solved so how to this the growth of a company this is the way pdca this is one of the technique called as hosin planning hosin kanji that here you have to step by step you have to plan do check act means one improvement made then the standard is the standard is raised so the gradually through standardization only we can improve the quality we can improve the process performance so the <clears throat> this way how we are filling the gap of current state and problem the desired state by creating a new standard or 
current state is because of the current standards so we have to improve through the new standard the inventor of toyota production system the key person who really created toyota production system or lean techniques is the taichi ono he says that without standards there can be no improvement so for the improvement we must have a basic standard because we are going to Im- make improvements through st- raising the standard so this way plan do check out the step by step we are bringing a change in the our process of operations then change in the standard once this is standard made some improvement is made then the standard is revised to the higher level and this way the continuous improvement is possible so the standard has got the great role to bridge the gap step by step so now we have just covered all the steps again i am summarizing what are the eight steps what they are this first step is about what is the problem the clarity of problem is very important to the all project team all the concerned people it must be clear visible measurable objective then what are the all the parts to the problem then breaking down the problem to various segments means all process steps sequence of steps must be broken down and every step must be analyzed to find out the root cause then after that what is our goal then third step is set your target what target should be there is smart smart <coughs> specific measurable achievable relevant realistic and time bound why did this problem happen now we have to collect a series of data based on the cause and effect principle y is equal to function of x the effect is function of various operating variables we have to collect the data and analyze the root cause then only we can reach to the true root cause so what will we do about it it means we have to find out several solutions alternative solutions by using the brainstorming technique brain writing technique and other several techniques then once root cause is identified appropriate solution is developed by jointly by the team and action plan is made so then next is do it once action plan is made for the uh, implementing the solution then do it the make sure that action plan is truly implemented plan is not just for just a intellectual exercise now comes that doing the real plan has to be put in practice to get the desired result. if it has worked well all the results are favorable then we become sure that my action plan and countermeasure was correct and once the result is favorable improvement is visible then standardize your process and train the people so that the competence of people are changed according to the improved according to the new method of working so these are eight steps must be followed to find the solution now let me take a case study how it has been implemented in a typical small and medium enterprise this is a <coughs> component called banjo it is banjo it is used in the most of the automobiles for the lubrication of various components this is made from the steel bright bars of specific composition so <coughs> one of the small industry very small industry which was making the banjo only for especially for the various two wheeler companies and nano are so many companies this is very commonly used through his the lubricant is passed on to the component so company was having lot of orders but it was not able to meet the quantity demand of customer due to low productivity so during one of the lean intervention we try to find out solution how to increase the productivity with the minimum investment by applying the lean tools this is a 
the very first operation as you see it's called automate machine is just rough grinding rough turning of basic balls as you see this is the automate saw where the first machining operation is done from the bright bar like this one bright bar is machine like steel balls the first stage these balls are further processed in cnc machines in three machines to create a hole and make exact dimension what is required so these are three various operations are performed in three machines <coughs> so first thing is that a project team was made then the schedule was made because a smart goal means it must be time bound it was made okay means within 12 weeks we must complete the project so a time schedule was made clarify the problem break down the problem set the target determine the root cause develop counter measures see counter measures through confirm results and process and standardize process these are the eight steps a schedule was made okay not more than 12 weeks we should take for implementing so first step what was the clarity means you have to collect realistic data means customer requirement means this was the average order given by the company it, it was varying between 3500 to 4500 even some cases 5000 5000 also but the actual supply by the company was around 3000 they were not able to means go beyond 3000 or 3100 but the potential was there up to 5000 every day the opportunity was there so the project was taken a3 for thinking project was taken how to increase the productivity without any capital investment first clarify the problem as mentioned earlier you have to first know what is the current production the problem was that production was not up to the desired level the current production was 29250 units per day what is the desired production was 4000 units per day this is the now applying a3 problem solving second step now break down the problem so here the whole process has to be broken down into several segments for that what we have to do we have to physically observe and identify the process step try process map so the first thing bright bar was turned in the rub ball turning machine they said then second was cnc ball turning it was turned again to exact dimension after the rub ball turning then the facing and drilling facing drilling and grooving operation in the next cnc machine second cnc machine and in third cnc facing and grooving operation so these are the four main operations in the process finally after completion of that a testing was done with magnetic particle testing and finally once it is cleared all where the chamfering is done and material was piled and dispatched so these are the operations so all the productivity constraints were there only in these four operations the rub ball turning cnc ball turning facing drilling and grooving and facing and grooving so if to improve the productivity we have to identify the real root cause of low productivity and develop a counter measure to increase the productivity so this was the approach followed by the team so rub ball turning first thing we have to calculate means we what we did first is measure the cycle time of each operation if you just see rub ball turning 45 seconds cnc ball turning 20 seconds facing drilling boring 45 seconds facing and grooving 25 magnetic particle testing one and chamfering 10 it means the first four operations only had a problem because number of machines used this is the actual status so ultimately the production output cycle was there 22 and half and 25 cycle means 20 25 seconds were taking each operation to produce one ball parallelly so if we just put on the process map machine current situation of the plant is that 
two machines are used for the ball turning cycle time it can be brought down to 22.5 seconds machine one cycle time 20 second machine two cycle time cnc machine two 22 and half second machine one cycle time was 25 seconds if you see because of the difference in cycle time there was an imbalance in the process which was impacting the low productivity now third is we have to set the target though although the orders were there up to 5000 but i suggested let's make a smart realistic achievable target so instead of going to 5000 let's decide that we'll make 4000 units per day this becomes our target so based on the production target the actual tag time that's called a demand rate was calculated so the all level it is calculated by dividing the total all level net all level time divided by the customer demand so it comes 18 seconds it means that every 18 seconds one banjo must be produced by all processes to meet the requirement of customer so if it is put in the bar chart form where the tag time demand rate is by the red light and red line is indicated it means beyond the red line all the cycle time it means that they cannot produce to the demand of as per the demand of the customer so just to meet the demand whatever the outside the red line that must be cycle time must be reduced by making improvement in the process and the operations so that the desired target can be achieved so now the first determine the root cause so based on the collected data all root cause means all the data are put in a proper funnel means this is the method define the problem any temporary measure if it is possible but here temporary measure may not inquire work so the we need to inquire further why 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 analysis why it is happening and then only the real root cause then once the real root cause is developed a proper solution is countermeasure is designed and implemented to solve the problem so this is a methodology used to identify the root cause so here measurement of the current cycle time current situation 22 and half to 25 seconds that was the current range so what is required it means to direct cause of low productivity because the rub ball turning cnc ball turning facing and drilling and boring facing and grooving means the cycle time reduction is required in the rough ball turning to 4.5 seconds cnc ball turning to 2 seconds facing drilling and boring to 4.5 seconds and facing and grooving to 7 unless we reduce their cycle time to the level of 18 seconds we cannot achieve the 4000 targets now four machines how to do it now rub ball turning they had excess cycle time of 4.5 means, means it was taking more than the required time so why it is limited capacity of the machine cnc ball turning has a two seconds more time metal cutting content in this operation is 25 percent higher that's why it is taking more time facing drilling and boring it was taking four and a half seconds extra time so high speed steel tools become short and high, higher cutting speed means it was using the high speed steel tools once it is cutting at higher speed it becomes hot and then the cutting comes down because because of the hot heating of the cutting tools the sharpness goes up this was the reason facing and grooving was having quite high cycle time tool change over time is high 40 minutes cutting speed is low so these are the root causes of higher cycle time at different operations. Now the step five, how it has been used, develop countermeasures. Here, in this case, actual experience of the operating people has to be extensively used and most of the equipment supplier, tool suppliers, they can help you to guide. So for developing countermeasures, I suggest that all companies, they must consult their equipment suppliers and tool suppliers to give better idea because they are having better knowledge 
and better material so they will be happy to help you so what counter measures were evolved by the team or using the experts in the rough wall turning used one more machine to reduce the cycle time from 22 and half to 18 seconds incidentally there was one machine lying in their stores unused so that machine could be just installed there was no capital investment involved it was just lying that machine was reinstalled it brought down its cycle time to much lower then cnc ball turning metal content in the operation is 25 har percent harder so the reduced cycle time due to high material cut in previous operation because the, in the previous operation more cutting was done to reduce the cycle time of the second operation facing drilling and boring high speed tools became hot and soft so a new technique of introduced rotary tool and use of carbide tool to increase the cutting speed so this can cut more material in the same time than the high speed tools and finally the facing and grooving operation change over time is high cutting speed so the smd could have been used to reduce the cycle time so now the sixth step counter measures through now the action plan was made now all the people means improvement actions taken one spare machine used material cut increased by using profile cutting tools cutting time reduced due to material content reduction in previous operation introduction of rotary tool and use of carbide tools and changed machining sequence from drilling facing and boring change over time reduced by applying the smed technique material cutting speed increase so this way these four actions were taken and again cycle time was measured in the first three operations it went much below the target value but fourth one because of some time constraint some some limitations of investment it could remain only 20 seconds so if you just compare again tag time so if you see the red one that is a revised improved operation so in the three operations cycle time was reduced after implementation of the measure and fourth operation it was still two seconds higher which was second project was taken which is not covered in this one so here the significant improvement taken place and the results were there just you see the process cycle time what was before implementation of a3 thinking which was a 25 seconds which was brought down to 20 seconds productivity units per hour 184 units per hour it went to 242 units per hour productivity improvement was 30 percent and potential to increase sales revenue increased by 30 percent so this way applying the problem solving technique using a3 thinking methodology which can significantly improve the productivity can reduce the cost and improve the quality and <coughs> deliver good results so after the successful implementation of the countermeasures the processes were standardized the standardized work how it is done sops were revised documents were revised people were trained on the new methodology and production plan quality plans were made to follow the improved methodology so here is standardization what is needed is standardized work basically all the sequence of operation is clearly step by step defined and people trained on that the training material was developed to how to train the people and the monitoring of performance a regular follow up is required to ensure that the new method becomes the standard practice of the company and people the very important that for a good work for good improvement they are encouraged by proper reward and recognition system by the company so every sme or the large company they must respect the people by providing them proper reward and recognition so that will generate a lot of sense of belongingness and more encouragement for making improvements in every operation so 
what suggest by this one to be an a3 thinker the whole concept has to start where not just on the floor first it has to start in the thinking the logical what is seven elements again i am repeating logical thinking process as you have seen we have logically gone with eight steps step by step not jump to any conclusion based on my past experiences i just again repeat experience has got no meaning unless you apply with the logical thinking process step by step everything minutely right then there was objectivity nothing was based on the feelings it was based on the data results and processes both has to be monitored both were monitored to ensure that the processes causal factors were changed to get the results synthesis visualization and distillation so here this is a very important part here the visual thinking is required people have to synthesize their ideas they have to visualize means how it look like and they have to distill their wisdom they have to distill their experience so come out with that and this is the very very important mental activity people have to learn then the thinking results process everything should be alignment to, aligned to the ultimate purpose of the organization with the vision of the company it is not just focused on the process the specific process improvement through the various process improvement we must achieve the vision of the company what we discussed in the beginning the growth growth in terms of the financial terms in customer value terms in process improvement terms and the competency and engagement of the people terms so this has to be linked with all the so coherency within and consistency across means all the team must think coherently system thinking and they must consistent in all the processes and this is a system we find instead of just thinking of a specific process or a specific department think in totality the problem is is maybe it may be appearing in your your department but it might be coming from the previous department or a problem is not tackled in your pro and department it is it may cause as adverse impact in the next process so that's why system thinking is very important so how the story a3 story board or a3 reporting is done background current state goals and objectives root cause analysis future state and counter measures checking the result and process follow up so we have seen that all these seven eight steps are followed logically in the case study as well as in the concept of a3 thing so all these things are presented in a3 report in the prescribed format it is a famous as a third poet of pioneered practice of getting the problem the analysis of the problem identify the corrective actions and action plan and implement the solutions <coughs> and report in single sheet of large a3 paper along with the graphics as per well. why it is because in one glance if you see the a3 sheet with all the complete aspect of it immediately your mind visualizes and synthesizes the problem and try to find out the solution at toyota a3 reports have evolved into a standard method for summarizing problem solving exercises status reports and planning exercises like while stream mapping a3 paper is the international term for paper 297 mm wide and 420 mm long the closest us paper size is 11 by 7 inches so this is the name is given because a3 sheet is used for summarizing and presenting the report so a typical this is a3 report for the banjo problem is that background there is a more demand of banjo due to production constraints company is not able to supply more quantities currently company is able to produce means situation 29500 banjo where the demand is more than 4500 so now the goal target was set 4000 banjo per day and the analysis was done cycle time analysis automate machine capacity analysis cnc machine analysis so all analysis 
and the problem limitations were identified. The recommendation use one spare automate machine for rough wall turning, which was lying idle. Use carbide tools instead of, instead of high speed tools. Implement SMAD to reduce change over time and increase the metal cutting and balance in all four operations. So the plan was made cycle time measurement of all process, study of cutting speed and tool material specification, the process leveling, application of SMAD and training of operators. These were the plan and which were implemented and then follow up is monitoring of cycle time and productivity, equipment availability, need to be improved, standardization of work, training of operators. So this way, A3 report was made for this one. And here, you just click away from access in Tata Steel. So this way, I thank you for your patient hearing of the A3 method. So if you are having any question, you are most welcome to send the email and we'll clarify through the email. So friends, this was just an overview of A3 methods. Just to give the comprehensive understanding of it, the summary form you can call as a trailer has been presented. For learning this one, you need minimum two days classroom and at least 10 to 12 weeks of working on a project under guidance of a lean consultant. Then only you can learn it. So this is a totally learning by doing approach and requires guidance of a coach who is formally qualified in lean and training methodology. I'm sure that with this webinar, you must have got the idea of lean tools, how they can help to improve business performance of your organization to create more value for the customer and wealth for your organization. So there are so many tools out there. We'll continue this journey. We'll be coming with some, again, most practical aspects of improving quality, improving process performance in the coming days with this, I thank you for your participation in this program. Thank you.